Thank you for tuning in to RideCars.com. I am your host, Patrick Greeno, and this is my buddy, Dan G. What's up, Pat? Hey, Dan. How's it going? It's going. All right. Good what's summer. What's new? So, uh, oh, man, so much. So, okay. yeah. I, uh, my, my card today is not very exciting, but it has a story to it. And there so, you go. Uh, and I, I kind of I like the story. So, Let's see it. So uh, I brought my copy of my uh, Invincible 2000. Um, it's Pacific, right? Mm -hmm. um, the purple Maguire variation from my... PC collect, you know, my PC, my collection. Sure. Um, and I just think it's such a cool card. I really like the, the acetate background. I like the purple, um, you know, serial number 299. But just, just a really cool card. But the story is, is uh, I've been wanting this card for a long time. A while. <laughs> and I've been looking and watching eBay and so forth. And, you know, I, I didn't want to pay a whole lot, but, you know, I was willing to, to, to shell out. And, uh, just recently, I was gonna going through my my collection, some stuff that I had not uh, sorted yet and put into the master collection, and uh, lo and behold, guess what's there? <laughs> you already had it. I already had it. <laughs> so I was kind of like, dang, <laughs> all those all that time I spent trying to find one, and uh, I already had it, you know. So I was kind of kind of stoked, and so I thought I would share it, and you know, get a chuckle out of the fact that I already had it. And I'm sure I'm not the only player collector that has ever experienced this, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> just one of those things where I was like, dang, I could have been looking for something else. Instead, I'm looking for this. And, you know, fortunately, I didn't buy one and then realize I already had one. So you had a moment. I had a moment, yeah. Do you have the Platinum Blue? I do not. I'm still looking for it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's the one you should be looking well, for. Well, I have been looking for that one as well. And to be honest, in the, in the chase, I picked up a Tom Glavin Platinum Blue because, mm. uh, you know, I was like, ah, I can't pass up for five or six bucks, whatever it was. Sure. Which I think is a steal, you know. Yeah. Because, you know, you know not that Tom Glavin's the biggest star of that time period, but he definitely has a following. Truly. And I think that somebody would have snatched it up for five bucks. So, That's a good price for that card. Yeah. Those are great. They got the um, the translucent upper half. Mm -hmm. I really like that. That's a, Those are packs I never bought when it came out. Likewise. Because they're, it's almost like back in 93 when Finest came out and these like upper echelon sort of products like Flare Showcase and stuff, I wasn't looking at the top of the shelves of the card shop. I was looking like at the, you know, eye level and below. And at the time I was pretty short because I was young. Right. And so all I was seeing was like, you know, base sets. Mm -hmm. I think the highest end product I ever opened was like 95 Emotion XL. Oh, yeah, that was a fun product. Yeah, yeah it was affordable though. Yeah. I mean, it's still kind of higher end and, you know, in, in comparison to base stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of the Pacific stuff was high yield. It was like, you know, pretty expensive. Yeah. And we, this was one of those products. What I thought was interesting at that time period though, and this may be just my perception, but um, Pacific, I felt like had this view uh, from collectors that it was um, subpar, you know, like Upper Deck and Tops and what they were, you know, were putting out was 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 top notch and then, you know, Fleer and then, you know, below that would be Pacific, right? Um, but I, I really look back at that time period and say, you know, Pacific was innovative. They had oh, man. amazing cars. They're one of my favorites. Yeah. I... I, I... I mean, I put them right up there with, like, Pinnacle in terms of innovation. Right. I mean, they, they were so innovative with so many different things. They got the die cut thing down long before a lot of other companies oh, really sure. knocked it out. Now, I can give Upper Deck the credit for that with, like, die cuts from, you know, uh, 94 SP. Right. But I think Pacific took it to a completely different level. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, and, and they had not just the top of the card. They had stuff with, like, crazy sharp edges sticking out. Um, stuff on the top flames, card stocks that were yeah, and the you know. really cool, interesting uh, yeah. foil parallels. A lot of stuff to chase. Some of it was a little bit more easier to identify than others, but I liked that and I loved the colorful, yeah. the colorful nature of Pacific. They always added really cool, like bright pastels mm -hmm. and things, and that's something else that drew me to Pacific because I'm a big fan of the fluorescence mm -hmm. and the pastels, and so. Pacific's right there in alignment with me. Yeah, but you know that was also around the time that I was working at a card shop, and like no one bought it. Oh really? Like, they would they would come in, and people wouldn't be excited for it. You know, and so it was, weird. It was, I can it see was that weird. though. It was weird, right? And, and that, like I said, it could be regional, it could just be me and right. my my recollection. But just one of those things where I was like, yeah, it really didn't get the respect that it should have. Right. Um, uh, and now as I'm 
older in my collection, I really, really, truly can appreciate all the parallels and the die cuts and the it's, innovation in the cards. Absolutely. I'm a huge fan of Pacific. I love Pacific stuff. And some of the most elusive parallels came mm -hmm. out of Pacific. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I'm still chasing a few of these things down that I just... I know they exist because I know you know another Thomas collector that has the proof to ten, mm -hmm. but I've never seen one offered to me, um, and so I, I see these things. I'm like, man, I'm blown away by so many different aspects of this brand. Right. And you're like, ear to your tone, it was like shuffled under the rug in a lot of yeah. ways back then. And I think now the player collectors and set builders are sort of like looking back and be like, gosh, I wish I would have chased this when it was out because mm -hmm. it was would have been easier for me to put it together. Right. I still think the Pacific stuff, in a lot of ways doesn't give the return value that some of the other brands do even now. Oh, yeah. But I still think that there are, like, you know, a Pennant Fever, Coppers, number to 20. Those still bring, they can bring dollar figures. They got a couple other, like, to 10 parallel, or insert, to 10 insert sets that came out that are extremely hard to find. Um, and I just think that they were just did a great job with, with their products. And I, this is one of them that I just really like a lot. Yeah. It's good stuff, man. I'm glad you brought that sure. by. Hopefully you're able to get the Platinum Blue parallel. One point. day. One day. It took me a while to get the Platinum Blue for Thomas. And then later on down the line, I actually got a purple that's serial number to 299, but it's got the Platinum Blue finish. Oh, that's cool. So it's got like a combination of two. It's, it wasn't supposed to be produced, but it was. I picked that up a couple of years, some years back, and I remember being like, that's awesome. Right. That's a nice combination of the two things, flavor-wise, an error, if you will. Um, definitely a great product, and I, I, I you know, it's, this is just some of the stuff you just don't see pack-wise, right. sealed boxes, you just don't see this stuff. I don't know if it's because it was all opened, it's all trashed, it was sold, because he went out of business. Yeah. Like, what happened to all the boxes of this stuff? Not cheap, either. Like, like if you find it, it's, who knows? it's yeah. rare. Awesome, man. Oh, cool. also, too... Thanks for using our fitted top loader bags. Sure, those are problem. great. Looks beautiful presentation ones. You can get those at our store, store.radicars.com. Link below. So thanks for bringing that by. Not a problem. Appreciate that, sure. Bob. Uh, we're going to change scene a little bit here. I picked this up recently. Uh, this is, now. you know, I follow like prospects that are popular from year to year mm -hmm. and seeing like who's hot. And um, back in 09, I wasn't prospecting at all, but I found out about this guy. I would say a couple of years later, mm -hmm. you know, and I was like, okay, so he was hot in 09. This is pre Strasburg, pre Harper, mm -hmm. pre Trout, you know, pre Abreu, pre Puig. Let's keep going with this, right? Pre, uh, uh, well, the list goes on and on. Right. Right? Tanaka, um, uh, then we had um, Bellinger and Judge, and now Otani. Right. So we've had this whole stretch of guys. That have covered every year we've got somebody and so back in 09 it was rick forcello and he was a the uh the pitcher for the um the detroit tigers at the time and he's a single time cy young award winner and i've been looking for something of rick forcello for a while i've been like kind of scouting the market for a couple of years actually looking for something and this this surfaced and now this is the 2009 tops chrome super fractor but this is the one without the serial number on the back. So this is the doesn't have the one of one on okay. the back. So it's actually would be maybe a replacement version that mm -hmm. was never replaced, like a maybe like a run a sheet through, see how the super practice are printed, and then you know the proof version. Right. Same standard two and a half by three and a half. So it's the same card that you would find with the one of one stamp, but mine just doesn't have the one of one stamp. Cool. I really like this card. I've, I've I saw it online starting I think last month. And the guy had it priced what I thought was kind of high, knowing it was, I almost hit the bin right then, but then I read the description missing one of one stamp. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I, I don't want to pay pack issued prices. I want to pay, you know, proof price, which mm -hmm. is a little bit less for this particular piece. So the seller and I was able to work a deal for this card at a price that made sense to both of us. And so I was real happy about that. I really love the finish on the Super Fractors, and I, I really like the 09 Tops design. It's, I think it's that's, pretty. that's a pretty yeah. design. And 11 is another one of my favorite Tops really? designs. I think the little like strip across the bottom there is really nice. Um, I think they just did it right that year, 09. And so this covers my Rick Porcello rookies because this qualifies as a rookie. It's not a, a technically an official one because it wasn't pack issued. Right. But it still fits in my collection. Now, 
if down the line I find something that is pack issued that fits, you know, in this kind of category, this 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 um, per, that fits my parameters, I might pick up something else. But I, I think that this is a great great presentation. And super fractors, obviously, every time I look at them, they're like diamonds. I'm just like drawn to them like amazing, <laughs> right? So I was real happy to grab this uh, for what it was. And um, did Dan, do you remember 2009? You remember the the, the Rick Porcello hype? I, I, I vaguely, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I really wasn't uh, focusing too much on 2009 yeah. on, on a baseball. I, you know, elsewhere was like I was probably looking at football that year. Yeah, you know, it's interesting how from year to year my my interests change. Right. Yeah, there was a period of time where, like, I bought everything hockey. <laughs> I don't think I've ever bought anything hockey, yeah. actually. Uh, so, the, the... But I know, do remember it. You do? Yeah. Yeah, because I think, you know, looking back on, like, in a retrospect in the last year, um, I think I like pictures. Mm -hmm. I think I, I, I'm drawn to buying cards of pictures for some reason. I, I'm just drawn to that position, and... Um, a lot of the players resonate with me in terms of what I knew was popular and what was hyped. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, for some reason, it just seems like they're pitchers. Right. I'm going through, like, I recently went through um, my, my to-be-graded stuff. And, and, you know, it's most of these guys are the pitching role. Some are batters that didn't make it, but most of them are pitchers. And so right. um, I don't even think I have a single catcher in there, come to think of it. <laughs> but I don't know if a single catcher has ever been hyped like a pitcher or a batter. Yeah, usually the position, yeah. You know, and so... Neglected. Right, right. So I was thinking about that, and, and, and this guy falls into that role, too, of, of, you know, guys that were once super, super hot, scorching. Right. And now they've calmed down because the market's focused on other players, so you give it some time to calm, and then you've got opportunities to cherry-pick some of the low-yielding fruit that was once high in the tree. And so I think this card, even though it's not a pack-issued example of certainly represents a time, captures a time, you know. I, I like the Topps Chrome, I think a little bit more than the Bowman Chrome of this year. Just, yeah. I like the design. I think sometimes the Topps Chrome arm, um, design-wise, out, out aesthetics, the, the, the appeal of, of Bowman some years. Yeah, the Bowman seems to be very monotonous at times, you know. They get the borders and they put the blue ones or, you know, it just... It seems to be monotonous. 11 is like that. Yeah. I like the 11 Topps Chrome over the 11 Bowman Chrome. Yeah. Design-wise, I think it, it's great. Same with 09. I prefer the Topps Chrome over the Bowman Chrome. But in 10, you know, I actually prefer the Bowman Chrome over the Topps Chrome. It, it was a different design that year. Yeah. You know, they, they still stuck with the theme, but, you know, it you know, had those little lines and... Well, they did two yeah. different styles that year in Bowman Chrome. Oh, they right. had, remember that? So yeah. they, they had like the prospects thing. Yeah. And then they had the veterans. And then the draft, they had the same design for the veterans that all the prospects had again. Right. So Strasburg had, now has this the, the veteran design that was found in the prospects set. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was kind of confusing, actually. Yeah. But I liked, I liked the Bowman Chrome design in 10 over the Topps Chrome design. That was just my own take. But... And 09, you know, going back to it, I think that it was done right with, with the, uh, the the Topps Chrome design. I think it was just, it's, it's pretty. Yeah, yeah it's I agree. Just, just a pretty set. Do you have any comments to say? I That's awesome. Yeah? Yeah, I, I like, like the Super Fractor look. And yeah. It's just one of those things where, you know, um, I think everyone's drawn to them. Yeah. Uh, it, it's amazing what people are, you know, asking for Super Fractors, oh. just common players and... What I'm seeing more recently is people are hovering over auction style listings and then the auction will yield a market value result. Right. And then within less than a week, they'll turn it around and try to flip it for over seven oh, yeah. times. Yeah. I'm like, dude, the market has already spoken. Don't, don't even get me started on that. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> especially with Super Fractors. If right. someone paid $200 for Super Fractor, you can't expect to get 1200 Right. If the right. market has spoken for 200 Right. You know, and I've seen this so much in the market consistently all the time. And then it slowly drops, but it doesn't drop ever to the price they bought it for because they want to make a profit, which I understand. But try not to gouge the market right. on it, you know? So... That there there are infinite stories like that I'm sure. Yeah. So cool stuff. So this is the 2009 Topps Chrome Super Fractor non-stamped version, which is the non-pack issued example of uh, Rick Porcello's rookie card, rookie year card. He's found in stuff prior to 2009, but 
this is, you know, rookie year. So I, I actually like the cards that feature the rookie card symbol because they're showcased in their, their actual official uniform. Right. And I, I think it just looks a little bit more official to me. And I like that. I'm drawn to that. So cool stuff. Cool. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, of course. That covers this episode. Thank you for tuning in to RadicCards.com. Thank you, Dan, for joining us. Thanks for having me. Of course. And until next time, enjoy collecting. Take care. If you like this content, please subscribe. Thank you. Enjoy collecting.